This week and in this exercise, we are going to explore something called clipping groups. And in the past, these have been called clipping masks. Now, I'm starting with an image like this. This is an image of the Rocky Mountains. And my goal here is to clip this into a shape. Now, shapes in this case are gonna be in type. However, all you really need is any kind of shape, whether it's a photograph of somebody or a flat shaped graphic or type. Uh, as long as it's surrounded by transparency, then you have the ability to clip an image inside of that shape. And then tonight, today, we're going to be working with type. Now, to get started, I have this image, and this is the image that I'm gonna clip inside of the type, but I'm also going to create a new file and develop the type, and then when we're done getting the type set up, then we'll bring this image in and then clip it in. So I'm gonna create the new file, and I'll call this Clipping Group Mountains. Now, the next thing we want to do is set our preset. Uh, we don't want a clipboard. I think what would be best is to choose photo again, photo size, and let's shoot for a larger landscape like 8 by 10. But of course, this is all dependent on what you want the output of your project to be. Um, do you want it to be an 8 by 10 or do you want it to be at 5 by 7? You have some freedom here, but I do want you to be thinking about size and not choosing really small sizes anymore. It's really important that we begin working larger um, just to get in the habit of it because in Photoshop with raster uh, data you really cannot enlarge after the fact. Um, so at least with data like this that's raster based. I'm going to create a landscape 8 by 10 and we'll go ahead and change this to CMYK. Um, RGB is used for anything that's going to stay on the monitor uh, primarily, and CMYK is for anything that is going to be printed. So in this case, I'm just going to switch this over to CMYK now, but you could also do it later. Now the background contents here are a choice of white, the background color, or transparent. And for right now, I'm going to go ahead and pick a white background because we will also change that later, and we'll click OK. Awesome. So here is our blank canvas, and let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be using type. Let me just situate this a little so that everyone can see it a little better. And whenever I'm working with type, we want to always create what we call um, safety zones or type safe areas so that uh, if this were a poster and the poster were going to be trimmed, you don't, by mistake, trim off important imagery or type. Now. Uh, we use guides to do this, and your guides are in the rulers. And I have my rulers out, but here's where you find your rulers. They're up here in the view menu. And we're going to drop on down to the rulers. Now, I already have mine out, so they're checked. But you just want to click on rulers, and your rulers will also show up. And the shortcut is Command-R or Control-R. Now, inside the rulers live these... Uh, sort of uh, guides. They don't print, but they do show up on screen. And I'm going to click and drag my first guide out. And this time I'm going to use about a quarter inch of a type safety area. Something like that can be good. Sometimes designers will use an eighth of an inch. And then I'm also going to put one on the other side, just in case I'm designing over there so that I also have a type safety guide in place and that way type will not go off the page. Next step is to talk a little bit about our type tool and if you've been looking at the web links uh, then you're getting more and more comfortable with type and chapters on type. I'm going to click on the type tool. That type tool is one, two, three, four up on the right and again I compress this toolbox so that you want to compress it two up click on this double arrow. I'll do that again. And I just like to talk about the tools when they're two up. So it's that is the fourth tool up. And you have several kinds of tools in here. This is your horizontal type tool. It's probably the most common. They do also give you a vertical type tool. And these are type mask tools that create type selections. And they are really fun. 
but we'll do that in our next lesson. So I'm clicking on the horizontal type tool and then I'm going to come up and get right on that guide and starting up here sort of in the two-thirds part of the file I'll get right on the guide and click and let go and I'm going to just type something like Rocky Mountains and before I do that because my background is white I'm going to look up here at the options bar and go ahead and change the color so that everyone can see it so I'm just going and so we all can see it I'm going to click on this color box and this is the color of the type that you want so let's click here and I'm just going to begin with a really light sort of tone because in the end uh, pro probably this color will be co covered by your photograph that you clip into the type so really the color doesn't matter it's just only matters so that you can see it on the page and click OK now I'm going to recommend a font that uh, is very thick and bold because if you use a thin and wispy typeface it'll be really hard to see the photograph inside of your type so here I've chosen a really good one called impact and I know that that will show the image really well so go ahead and find a bold sort of typeface and I'm going to type in Rocky Mountains and of course you could type anything you might think of doing a poster that would be really cool of a place that you love in the world like Switzerland or Japan and you could fill images fill all of the type with images of those areas so this can get quite uh, intricate anyway I need to uh, make this type a little larger and a couple ways that you can do that but one thing to notice is that over here in the layer uh, panel the type layer has been created as soon as you begin typing your text and one of the best ways to highlight type at least it's the way that I like to do it is by just double clicking on the T in this layer I'm going to do, go ahead and do that this will highlight the type and then just like a word program you can come up into your options bar and start uh, resizing your type and this is where you resize type I'm going to give you a little trick and if you set your uh, cursor right on the icon here of the T's you'll get what we call a scrubber and this allows you to click drag and hold your mouse down and start dragging to the right here in this case to make the type bigger what I'm going to do is try to align it with that guide on the other side get it as close as I can and then I want to take a look at it and the best way I like to do that is with the the move tool you know the move tool the top right tool is a pretty benign tool and so I recommend it when you're needing to look at your file and you've got a, t a tool that's not quite working in your favor go ahead and use the move tool and then also I can see I'm just off of a hair here with the, the with the guide and so here's a little trick with your move tool if you look down at your keyboard you can just adjust the type by using the arrow keys so I'm going to hit the left arrow key and this makes just very slight uh, movements in incremental ways with your type I'm also going to move that type now down a little and I'll use that arrow key to the down key to press downward and make that type move that type downward it's just a little bit more balanced so now we have our type and I'm going to show you how you create your clipping group and then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, place some layer styles onto the type so that we can see it even better um, and create a background color that works with the type uh, one of the functions or one of the re important factors about type is that there are two properties that we really keep in mind one readability and then two that it's got to look good so those are two things with form and function that we keep in mind so I have the other image right here and I'm gonna click on it that was this image and I want to show you how you can move this in in a pretty easy way at least in this round I'm going to select all of the image and of course I have two layers make sure you're on the layer that has the photograph 
and I'm going to just edit copy just like a word file if you were highlighting a word this is sort of similar I'm going to copy that data and then just come over here and click right back on the file I was on and edit and paste now this is going to move into the file and this is what you want to do you actually want to come in and I'm going to click on this with the move tool and you want to coat your image with just coat the image or excuse me coat the type with the image just place it right over it on right on top of it and this is how simple it is to create your clipping group you just simply come right on the line in between the type layer and the image layer which is above your type and hold down your option or alt key option for Mac and alt for Windows and you will see this really interesting cursor it's sort of like a double zero or double uh, elliptical shape that's kind of looks like that and just click once and there is the imagery that's been placed inside of the type now what's really fun is that we can come in and still move that that image in there so that we can just get it the way we like it and I just kinda interested in just showing the mountains and not so much of the bottom area but of course that's up to you mostly I think it's important to be able to see the imagery that you want to show off inside your text if you can't see it then no one else can and then sort of pointless to do this I think at any rate here is our uh, clipping group and all we did is just option click between these layers you can tell a layer is clipped because you'll see this arrow that points down at the bottom layer and don't forget I'm just gonna turn this off for a minute that the only way to clip is if you have a shape surrounded by transparency on that layer and you can see all I have is this type layer on and that's why uh, it's surrounded by transparency and that's what you have to have whether it's type or a shape or a photograph that's been cut out somehow you know which we'll get into later you have to be able to have that shape or those pixels surrounded by transparency in order for this to to work for you. Now I'm on the type layer and at the bottom you'll see the FX button. The FX button allows you to apply fun things like a bevel and emboss and a drop shadow. So quickly I'm going to add the uh, layer style. These are called layer styles. They used to be called FX and to the left are all of the different kinds of styles that you can add once you target one and you make it blue you gotta really hit it in terms of don't just check the box but actually uh, highlight it in blue then you have the ability to make those kinds of changes over here to the right so I'm looking at the drop shadow and just a few things about that you can choose the opacity of your drop shadow you can choose the color of your drop shadow um, this is the angle at which you want the, the light source to be coming from so this is coming from the top left and then the distance is how far away you want the drop shadow to be. I'm just going to do just a little bit, like maybe 13 points. The spread is density. It just makes it a little bolder. You just do a little of that by 3%. And then the size is your blur. You can see if I go up. Best thing is to really move these sliders so you can see what they're doing. Now I just like it to be delicate, so I'm just going to get a little bit of that layer style, of that drop shadow. Now I'm going to really hit this bevel emboss, click it down, make it blue, highlight it, and then you have the ability to add your three-dimensional bevel right here in style. Look and try these different bevels and pick the one that you like. It's the best way to try these. Is just look at them. Then you can um, decide on whether you want the technique to be a smooth technique. Let me zoom in on this so that you can you do that so you can really see this. There's our drop shadow. And we've got smooth chisel hard, which you can see just gives you a more of a beveled edge and chisel soft, which is a little too chiseled for my taste. So maybe I'll leave it with chiseled hard. The, the depth of it looks like this, and you can create the kind of depth that you're going for. I just want a little bit. It's really cool how this image comes across this bevel and you can see it going down sort of the sides of the letter form. Um, direction, yeah right now we want it to